Age of Radio. What's going on, everybody? We What's are, up, folks? We are back. This is episode 135 of the Dark Windows Podcast. My name is Kevin. I'm Kevin. And if you don't know what we do here, this is a podcast, dummy. It's one of those things. It's like internet radio, but I don't know. There's no politics generally or commercials. We have two commercials we put in the middle, but that's, you know, besides the point. Anyway, Kevin, this week, what are we talking about? We're talking about a place. Fucking really? Yes. A place, not a thing or a person? No. Wow. No, no. Super vague. Anyway. I, I know. Definitely a place. Definitely a place in, in West Virginia. <laughs> Almost yeah. heaven. Yes. West Virginia. Fucking th- stop singing that shit. <laughs> I love that song. I hate him. Eh, sucks to be you. I know. We are talking about Trans-Allegheny Lunatic, Lunatic Asylum also known as Weston State Hospital. Yes. Now, before we get in, it's located in Weston, Virginia. West Virginia. West Virginia. Not not Virginia. Not regular Virginia. No. Weird Virginia. Yes. Mothman Virginia. Yes. So, Snallygaster Virginia, technically, too, if you want to get into it. True. But we'll save that for a different episode. <laughs> That's on a different day. So, before we get into it, Let's give you some reasons for admission from the years of 1864 to 1889. What's super funny is we actually both had this thing pulled up separately without knowing it from the other one. Yeah. And, it, <laughs> and it's 1864 is because, well, that was the year that it actually opened. Um, but a lot of these are pretty boilerplate, like right across the board for uh, for asylums back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of them. Um, so the first one... And these a lot of the ones I'm giving, and I don't know about Kevin, but a lot of the ones that I'm giving are are pretty freaking stupid. <laughs> a lot of them are real stupid. Um, first one is intemperance and business problem. <laughs> okay, you got a business problem. Your 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 ass is going into the, you know, into the into the asylum, ha- the nut, loony bin. Okay, how about reading novels? Oh, that's that's a good one. That's on here too. That is, yeah, no, that's uh, um, we're all fucked. Like everybody that listens to the show, most likely is fucked. <laughs> Imaginary female problem or trouble. Yeah, I, I understand that one. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the females that listen to this might not. Yeah, it's, that's why they didn't go to the hospital. It's imaginary it female problem. They might be uh, quite pissed that there's not an imaginary male trouble. There's a reason for that, and it's because we run the world. Sorry, ladies. Get used to it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, one of my personal favorite, tobacco and masturbation. Like, are you smoking cigarettes and beating off, or are you beating off and smoking cigarettes? Yeah, but... Are you beating off and smoking cigarettes at the same time? Are you beating off with tobacco leaves? Yeah, but then there's... Huh? The, but then there's the opposite end of the spectrum. Suppressed masturbation. So either, A, you, you masturbate, but you don't masturbate enough... So there's a thin line where you have to masturbate just the right amount. Listen, nobody's going to tell me how much I can or can't masturbate. <laughs> My body, my choice. Or Works for everything else, right? Or there's masturbation for 30 years. Now, this one this one brings up some questions. Continuously or over the course of 30 years? I don't know. Because either way, I could potentially be, you know, incriminating myself. No, here. here's a here's a good one. All on the masturbation line, masturbation and syphilis. Now, how can you combine the two? You can get syph- you get syphilis and then you masturbate. Okay. Having syphilis could technically put you, you in here anyway. Get, you can't just get ma- uh, syphilis from masturbating. No, you get syphilis from like fucking a fish or something. Hmm, okay. I mean, it's sex-related, but yes. Either way. Um, there's also one, laziness. So if you're lazy... Again, completely You go into the house. 
this 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 next one picked this I I'm sorry I have to cut you off but this one fits Kevin perfectly probably me too overaction of the mind yeah yeah I, yeah this this one doesn't apply to either one of us marriage of son <laughs> so if you marry your son you go to the you go to the you go to the fucking box you should but there's nothing on here saying marriage of daughter no so it should be the same thing but as that song goes here's, it's a man's world here's another good one over taxing mental powers Ooh. so if you're a psychic i think you go in here my personal favorite the war well i mean there uh i think that one is a legit one because i think there's um there's a uh kind of um different things categories for all needs that right like you know but they just they don't specify they're just like yeah oh, you, you you even vaguely remember the war fuck you get in there actually i did find i did find my new favorite one i'm sorry exposure and quackery <laughs> <laughs> so these are just some stupid fucking reasons i mean uh i mean fever and loss of lawsuit business nerves salvation army um <laughs> Gunshot wound. Seduction. Now, when for a gunshot wound, wouldn't you actually go to the fucking hospital? No, mental hospital. It's it's all in your head. Ah, gotcha. Seduction and disappointment. That's mm. that's literally the name of my fucking memoirs. <laughs> <laughs> Female disease. Yeah. I okay. Fell from a horse in the war. Hey, but guess what? Just remember, your couch is, your house sets sets on fire. You better not fight it because guess what? You will go in the nut house before fighting fires. <laughs> I don't know. Deranged masturbation. That could be the subtitle of my memoir, I guess. <laughs> uh, oh, Marriage of Sun is on there. I, I'm sorry. I, I already read that one. Never mind. Yeah. It's because I have Opium Habit. That's on there as well. Bad, <laughs> bad whiskey. Oh, bad news for our friends in Danby, Vermont. Parents were cousins. Uh, uh, <laughs> Religious enthusiasm. Some of these are real fucking dumb. Yeah. yeah. Do, do, do. Gathering in the head. Isn't that basically the same thing of an overaction action of the mind? I don't know. I don't know. Ergotism. So, yeah, if you, uh, you, if you got in some bad fucking rye, <laughs> some bad bread... And you think you're a werewolf? Mental hospital. I mean, domestic trouble. Desertion by husband. That's the best reason on here. Your husband left into the loony bin. Get to yeah. step in. No, no exposure and quackery. I don't understand. That's that doesn't. Uh, I think you said that one. I did, huh? but it doesn't make any sense to me either. Yeah. Hey, if oh eats- man, I wish this one was still a real one because we could get a le- get rid of a lot of people with this one. Political excitement. Ooh, goddamn! There'd be like six of us left. Yeah, and we all voted for the only functional adult in the election, but that's okay. Now you know what? N- th- now this one right here is the only one on here that actually does not exist. Brain fever, brain fever. Nope, nope. <laughs> it actually does not exist because it is not a. F- is actually an a term anywhere it okay. is for basically it's for mental retardation or or not ret- what they used to call mental retardation actually down syndrome stuff like that or not really even that it's for someone who has possibility as they refer to it as having um dumb genes called feebleness <laughs> of intellect they dumb called genes. it feeble mindedness which does not exist so many people went into these places because they were quote unquote dumb because they had, well, a lot of places it was because they had a percentage of black in them. Okay, so you're going to get upset um, about that, but you're not upset about the fact that you could be put into one of these hospitals for having fucking asthma. No, no, no. I, I didn't say that. I said no. It's just like this no, is the one that does not exist. There is no terminal. There is no imaginary female trouble doesn't exist either. Well, I mean, I don't know. 
it's all in the eye of the beholder there. You know? <laughs> because we could be like, you know, she says that she's this or that, but I don't really know. I think she's just, you know, bitchy. <laughs> uh, fucking bad company. Like the band, the Ooh. album, or the tour. All Which one above? gets you in there? All of the above. Especially like, I don't know. I, let's see, a lot of these are fucking really stupid. Death of sons in war. So if your kids died in the Civil War, fucking hop in the bus. Here's another one that would that would probably get a lot of people in hot water these days. Medicine to prevent conception. Well, because oh. you're not supposed to fuck for fun. You're supposed to fuck to make kids. Well, a lot of people, you know. Just saying. Don't want to have If kids. you have any morals. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know shit. I don't either. I'm just saying. You know. But yeah, these are these spinal are... irritation. Is that like a back injury? Could be shooting of daughter. I, th- I mean, I think we kind of that would make sense. I mean, a, a lot of like dropsy. That, isn't that like a um, a really... medical thing that would? I'm pretty sure that's some kind of like uh, medical thing. That uh, would... Swelling of soft. Uh, I'm sorry, swelling of soft tissues due to accumulation of excess water. Uh, so it'd yeah. be like water on the brain, water on the knee. Yeah. Yeah, that's – that's uh, and I mean, I don't know. That w- I think that would be like in the hospital hospital, not the mental hospital. I don't know, but we've been doing this for like 12 minutes. We should probably like get into the show. I'm going to have to cut some of this shit down. No, because it's all worth it. So, well, with that said. Yeah. All those uh, wonderful things. So the building was built in 1850, between 1858 and 1881. Um this building was designed by architect Andrew uh, Richard Andrews, who was a well-known architect for his time. He designed the building following what is called the Kirkbride Plan. And there is a lot of hospitals that are set up under that yes. same plan. Yes. Um, Danvers State, which we saw yes. when we went to Salem. Um, I want to say... Um, oh, Jesus. We, got, we covered it forever ago. Waverly Hills. I want to say they were set up. They're set up the same way. Uh, I don't think so. I think this was. I think Waverly. It's basically just the design of the building. I think that he got his idea possibly from Waverly. Maybe, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the hospitals actually did design um, their works after him because of his, of his idea. Now. Uh, the plan called for long window, long wings on the building to be built in a staggering formation so that connecting structures would obtain an optimal amount of sunlight and fresh air. Um, this would be done for therapeutic reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I feel that it would be a good idea to actually get into the man behind the plan for the building, uh, Thomas uh, Story Kirk, Kirkbride. Uh, he was a doctor and crusader for the mentally ill who founded what in would in time become the American Psychiatric Association. Kirkbride, built on the foundation established by famous reformer Dorothy Dix, who sought to disabuse, disabuse people of their misconceptions about mental illness, namely that it was a shadowy, uh, irreversible condition best related in darkness with force and physical restraint. Basically putting him in a holding cell and and beating them or, or shocking them. Yeah, uh, all that fun still, shit. Which still, I mean, shocking kind of still came around still. Oh, it definitely yeah. did. Um, so his idea for the treatment of insane was shaky science, but it led to more humane and all-around more effective – a more effective plan of treatment for the residents of his asylums than any of uh, other practice of the era. He emphasized the importance of light and fresh air, suggesting that the asylums be built as long halls with 12 foot ceilings, plenty of windows and ventilation that allowed for cross breezes. He also emphasized freedom mental patients. He felt should be allowed to roam as much as possible and oh. find stimulation for their minds. Oh, that's a real bad idea. It's a real bad idea because a lot of these people are like <laughs> a little bit on the violent side. So, yeah, well, fuck it. Let's just let them roam. You know, see what yeah. happens. 
Um, Just give them fucking chainsaws while we're at it, too. <laughs> they uh, they would behave better, not worse, if given more control over their own lives. His ideas inspired the construction of 73 Kirkbride hospitals across the country in, in the second half of the 19th century, including this one, trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Um, when the original portion of the building was opened in 1864, it had the ability to house 250 patients at one time. Now, due to the number of patients increasing, the building had to be expanded to the point that it is now. The building as it stands now is supposed to hold just over uh, 2,400 patients. Yeah, um, not quite. It achieved that amount by the 1950s and went over that amount, causing overcrowding and poor conditions for the patients. The building was built by skilled stonemasons who had been brought in from Germany and Ireland to contribute to the architecture that featured wide open windows, giving patients access to natural light and fresh air. I, I did actually find a couple of other um, Kirkbride-style uh, hospitals near us. Uh, the Hudson River State Hospital in Poughkeepsie, New York, and uh, Taunton State Hospital in Massachusetts, which we've driven right by. Yep. We drove by there. We went down to King Richard's Fair because we drove right through uh, Taunton. Um, and another hospital that's actually going to come up in my half of it, um, the – oh, Jesus. I lost it here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Washington, D.C., Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I got a real piece of shit to talk about for the for part of this. So okay. Well, uh, the grounds were magnificent and sustainable, including a working farm, dairy, waterworks, gas well, and cemetery. Uh, the total acreage of the property was <laughs> six hundred and sixty-six acres with thirteen buildings. Yeah. So um, hey, it was. As, Let your tinfoil hat take you where it will. No, well, <laughs> uh, it was as architect Richard S uh, Snowden Andrews had intended it to be, a self-sufficient state-of-the-art facility designed to make patients feel at home, well cared for, and restored. I mean, Waverly Hills wasn't a lunatic asylum. It was for people. It was a TB hospital. Yeah, for tuberculosis. Might as well be the same thing, though. But. <laughs> You're not going to get treated this, any better. But it had the same plan, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, they were treated well. I mean... Were they, though? For the most part, yeah. I mean, I seem to remember uh, putting, it, like, balloons in underneath people's lungs and inflating them and having them occasionally pop okay. and rupture their lungs. And also, uh, like, I think they, hey, we know you're having a hard time breathing, so we're going to put a 20-pound bag of fucking lead shot in your chest and make yeah. you breathe. That'll help. Well, yeah. I mean, these were things that they they thought would help at the time. They, it's not that they were trying to. I I personally don't think they were trying to be mean about it. I think they were doing things that they thought would help. It's you know it's, you gotta have some common sense though. Yeah, but when you don't know anything about it, when you don't when you don't have a clue about what how to treat a you know disease, when you thought that hey having the windows open right up until goddamn snow was you know on the the foot of the bed of people because, you know, fresh air was the best thing. Right. I mean, that kind of, you know, that was stupid too. But I mean, as a, as a doctor, you should think these people are having a really hard time breathing because they have a disease. So let's put a bunch of weight on their fucking chest and see if that helps. It's, it's fucking common sense shit. It's not going to help. You're a doctor. You should know that shit. Well, I mean, when you don't know, I mean... But you're yeah. a fucking doctor. You should be able to guess, like, hey, maybe putting extra weight on these motherfuckers isn't going to help. Why don't we, like, hold them underwater and see if that makes them breathe well, better? Well, they actually did a thing here, there that they do here, I believe. Um, there was a, uh, a certain treatment. I'll t I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to go over, I'm gonna go over some of the treatments um, just a little bit that, you know, I know Kevin's going to cover two of the treatments pretty well. Um, but anyway... Get back to this. So by 1881, the hospital saw a boom in the number of patients, and it would end up housing 500 more patients than the hospital was able to house. The hospital couldn't keep up. Conditions began to decline dramatically. Patients 
were crammed together with sometimes four or five into a room intended for one. This Jesus extended Christ. even further. It impacted the hospital's farm due to the number of patients the farm was not able to keep up. This then led to patients suffering and some becoming malnutrition, which didn't help the ma- mental health at all. Of uh, yeah, obviously. There. Um, by 1938, the Trans-Algenian Lunatic Asylum was six times over capacity. Fuck's sakes. The patients inside were running around wild, and orderlies outnumbered uh, struggled to regain control. At its peak in the 1950s, the hospital was holding 2,600 patients, more than ten times the number <sighs> it was intended to house. That's fucking gross. So, in to expose the terrible conditions within the hospital, the Charleston Gazette attempted to send a crew in to investigate the inner workings of the asylum. What they found shocked them. Patients were sleeping on the floor and in freezing rooms due to lack of furniture and heat. The overcrowding was had resulted in overworked staff and a decreased emphasis on sanitation. The once bright, clear windows were covered with grime, darkening, and furthering chilling the rooms. The wallpaper was peeling from decay, and where it hadn't disintegrated on its own, the patients had torn it off in a panic. Worse still, the patients themselves, um, those whom the orderlies deemed, quote, unable to be controlled, had been locked in cages in open spaces in an attempt to make more bedrooms available for less worrisome inhabitants. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The asylum had also become a training ground for experimental lobotomies, which Kevin's going to Oh, I'm going to talk about me some fucking lobotomies Um, here. And is Walter Freeman, the famous surgeon and lobotomy advocate, opened up shop. We're gonna um, we're gonna put anytime we refer to this motherfucker as a surgeon or a doctor in air quotes. Yeah. Um, by the time the asylum closed, only part of its grounds has had been expanded to accommodate the new demand, which was the graveyard. Mm. Um, the ex- expose published by the Gazette spurred a r- movement to close the hospital. It was wasn't until 1994, after more than 100 years, that the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum closed its doors forever. So while researching, I did find that this facility, like so many others um, like it, had a morgue, dentist office, geriatric ward, and a beauty shop. Uh, One of the wards in the building was the old soldier's ward, which was at one time uh, housed soldiers from World War I. Who were suffering from shell shock, or as we call it today, PTSD. Yep. Uh, the building also had an apothecary or a medicine store. You know, the the, the one term that I hate the most for, that they've ever used for that was battle fatigue. Yeah. Because that makes it sound like you're a little bitch and you got tired of fighting. Yeah. No. You watched one too many of your buddies get blown in half by an artillery shell. Or, or gassed. Or... or gassed. Or, you know fucking killed a bunch of motherfuckers and then you have to deal with that for the rest of your life yeah but you know you just need a nap you'll be okay yeah of course fucking assholes so Goddamn psychiatrists uh, the medicine store uh they distributed s- things such as heroin pot and bourbon fucking right <laughs> to the patients as medicines i also f- did find that while researching you had to go to the dentist to get cocaine though yes um i came across uh that before the building was closed, it also housed those um, that one that were actually it was actually one of the floors. I believe it was the fourth was actually um, for rehab for alcoholics and drug addicts. Uh, now, the hospital also um, had a large auditorium that was once used for a chapel, basketball court, and used for. High school proms. Oh, well, that's fucking cool. Yes. Um, now, I did find that besides lobotomies, as a form of treatment, all, the hospital also had other forms of treatment, that, such as insulin shock therapy. Oh, 
in which place, patients were placed in medically induced comas. That's fucked. Um, ice cold hydrotherapy mm-hmm. to treat uh, women diagnosed with hysteria. Now, for this treatment, they would be wrapped up in a, a wet sheet and then they would be put in a tub and it would be allowed to actually like just dry or whatever. And as it did, it like yep. kind of like formed to them and got really, really tight. Yeah, they got they they, almost they, like swaddled them. Yeah, like I a baby. believe they did this at Waverly as well. They did this right. a bunch of places. Um, yeah. <clears throat> now, I, t- I found this bit of information to be. Uh, that gathered rather interesting. Um, the Asylum's gift shop. <laughs> the fucking gift shop. Yes. <laughs> I went through electroshock therapy and all I got was a stupid fucking t-shirt. Well, they actually, they actually did have a, a store there. They actually had, you know, but the now Asylum, the now place has a, because part of it's a museum. Well, and yeah, they, now I, oh, okay, now yeah. it has a gift shop. That makes yeah. sense. I thought you were talking like, you know. Hey, yeah, come well, pick no, up. Well, no, 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 no. They did have a gift. No, they had. They did. That's fucking crazy. Well, why? It's a hospital, dude. Yeah. If you're just... going to visit someone, and like, well, look at our ho- look at look at any hospital. They have a gift shop down downstairs, so you can get a bear or a flower or you know, get something. Fair, but we're not electrocuting people's fucking brains at the hospital either. Oh, probably one time we were. And in the Rutland Hospital, I wouldn't put it past them because those guys don't know what the fuck they're doing. But, well, you know, yeah, maybe they'll have a lot of shit up there. <laughs> a lot of shit. Yeah. Anyway, so the Asylum's gift shop displays a poster, and I found this, and I had to, you know, share it verbatim. Um, it's an enlargement of a document compiled from patients' uh, case studies listed some of the factors that led to patients being admitted to the asylum between 1864 and 1889, which included most of the things that we were talked about, which – um, entries such as vicious vices in early life, seduction, egotism, bad whiskey, indigestion, loss of arm, shooting of daughter, <laughs> and doubt about uh, mother's ancestors. Okay, that uh, one's real fucking weird. Yeah. I don't know. Like, that sounds like a eugenics thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of this... I don't think my mom was quite white enough. Well, that's but what, I'm not sure, and it makes me upset. That's what feeble-minded, the feeble-minded part was eugenics. All this was like we have a place here in. No, but I was talking. To, I was talking more like, oh, so your mom's not quite the right shade of white. I think we have to kill you to be specific. Exactly. That's what the feeble-minded part. That's what they were they were referring to that. That's what it refers to. It's part of the eugenics movement. We have a place here, within. 15 miles not even that that actually practiced um eugenics called the brandon training school they had people that were there that were not did not have down syndrome autism you know they people that were there were well when they first opened they were just dumped off because they they were troubled kids or whatever. Their parents couldn't take care of them. It was the, the biggest issue. No, their parents didn't want to take care of them. Couldn't or wouldn't, either way. Well, when you're just a troubled kid, you know, and you and you get there and you just, you know, are acting out because you have, you know, ADHD or, you know, whatever. You're just troubled. You just don't really, you know, you're not, you don't really have a, a, an actual problem. You don't have Down syndrome or as they refer to it as mental retardation, um, which bad term. But it's for it. It's a term. It's of the time. Well, we can't, we can't fucking take it back. It's a word that they used. It is, you know, but just because we don't use it now doesn't mean it's not a valid term that was I, actually fucking used medically. You know I what know. I mean? I know. But, you know, they uh, but a lot of these people that were, you know, put in these places like there's another one that we probably will cover eventually is Penhurst. That if we think Trans Allegheny is bad, Penhurst makes it look like a way puss. worse. You know, there are people that were in there that should not have ever been there. No. Um, but in the 1800s, when women had fewer rights, it was easy for men to have their wives committed for the rest of their lives, suggesting that this 
could have been a way for men to get rid of their wives um, so that they could pursue new relationships. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this meant uh, this might explain some of the entries doc, uh, doc, documenting some of the underlying reasons f- behind the hospital's admission, such as change of life, menstrual problems, and childbirth, <laughs> as well as she's on the rag again. Take her, <laughs> yeah, as well as political or religious uh, excitement, disappointment, uh, d- disappointed love, death of sons in war, domestic trouble, laziness, or novel reading. So those are kind of uh and again if we could still put people in mental hospitals for political excitement fucking 9 tenths of the country would currently be in hospitals. Yeah. And, and you know maybe it's not the worst thing in the world <laughs> to be like oh it, it's it's like people that get really fucking worked up about sports are kind of the same thing. You know what I mean? My fucking team lost Everything sucks for now. It, it's going to suck either way. Because guess what? They're all on the same fucking team. Oh, I mean, just some of the stuff that, you know, that uh, these people are in for. I mean. Oh, it's fucking insane. Like, legitimately, some of the reasoning for it is absolutely goddamn insane that they're in here. You know, it, it um, I don't know. It, it just kind of begs, you know, to the point of. Why the fuck were some of these people put into situations like, I'm pretty sure Kevin's going to discover one, one death mm. where fucking brutal. these people brutal. Su- shouldn't have been anywhere near, you know, this particular guy. No. I mean, it's just crazy. So with that said, Kevin, why don't you take it away? Why don't we take a break first? Oh, right. And then I'll come back. We'll take a break. Okay. Okay, so we're back. Um, there's a there's a man that we need to talk about here that I initially actually started working on very very early on in the show when we were originally going to do Danvers as one of our first like five episodes because it was close. And you've already mentioned him once, uh, and his name is quote unquote Doctor Walter Freeman. Use the term doctor very fucking loosely here. Yes, whatever. He went to medical school. Yippee fucking Yahoo. Doesn't make him a doctor. Walter Freeman was born November 14th, 1895 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And obviously, like we've already said, became a physician. The reason this guy comes up is because he's referred to as the father of lobotomy. He came from a long line of doctors. His father was an, I almost said ornithologist, but that's a bird doctor, I'm pretty sure. Yes. I'm not even going to... It's it's not not a bird doctor. It's it's just you study birds. You're a bird scientist. Yes. I'm not even going to, like, attempt to say this word. He was an ear, nose, and throat doctor. An uh, orthologist? Othlonarigistist. Oh, Whatever. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking about. And his mother's father was a surgeon. Okay. So after he, like his whole childhood, you know, saying, I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor. He goes on to university. He goes on to Yale university, graduates from there. And then moves on to the university of Pennsylvania as a medical student. So he kind of failed there, you know, saying, I don't want to be a doctor. And all of a sudden I got drunk and I woke up and I'm a doctor. So, Whoops, slipped and yeah, fell. <laughs> I, I, I fell on my doctorate in the shower. Yeah, damn. What um, the hell do I do? So after, after graduated. <laughs> well, not so much fell on a doctorate. You just fell into fucking. Uh, uh, I fell MD. on a medical de- a medical <laughs> degree. Got a Ph.D. right up my ass in the shower. Um, so after graduating in 1920, he went to Europe to study uh, neurology. And upon returning to the States, he took a job as the director of laboratories at St. Elizabeth St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Washington, D.C., as the first neurologist in the city of Washington, D.C. Hmm. Well, I don't know where this is. That's interesting. Never heard of it. What, St. Uh, Elizabeth's? Yeah, I've never heard of it. It's, uh, again, it's, I'm, I'm sure it's probably not directly in D.C. It's probably, like, yeah. in, like, the metropolitan area, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. In the following years, he earned a Ph.D. in neuropathology, 
and became the head of the neurology department at George Washington University. Oh, wow. So he's not a dumb guy by any, any stretch of the imagination. He just has questionable morals. In 1935, Freeman had been informed of a study being done on chimps where core samples are being taken out of the animal's brains, specifically the frontal lobe, mm -hmm. in an effort to make the animal's temperament more manageable. Yeah. Because chimps are kind of a... I mean, they're like us. Close enough, they, yeah. they, they have their fucking moments where they just go off the handle. Exactly. And occasionally eat a woman's face and get shot to death by the cops. I remember that story. That's that poor happened. woman. <laughs> um, so that same year, a Portuguese doctor performed a procedure for the first time called a luectomy, which is very similar as to what was being done on chimps, but it was being done on a human for the first time. The idea of smashing a human being's frontal lobe and memories into goo made Freeman just intensely hard. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to try the same thing. Do the exact same thing. Except I'm going to call it a lobotomy. And it's the same thing, but it's not because I called it something different. So fuck this Portuguese guy. I know he did it first, but mm -hmm. me. I called it something different, so it's it's mine. I win. Um, yeah. So his thinking with this was, if we get into that frontal lobe and we start just fucking smashing shit around, it's going to make you more manageable because what causes mental illness is excess emotion. Yep. So you having, you know, just being a, an emotional person, like most people are, that's the cause of your mental illness right there has nothing to do with, you know, brain chemistry or potentially a traumatic event in your life. It's because you're, you fucking, you, you cry when something sad happens. So yeah, he, he just gets this idea. I need to get into their brains and I need to start just swirling shit around to see what happens. If I can fix their personality, his first patient slash victim was a 63 year old woman who suffered from insomnia and agitated depression which is pretty similar to what we would call bipolar disorder now. So you kind of have your mood swings where you go, you know, high to low, you know, sad, angry, yep. you know, shit that we can, you know, clear up with medication now instead of having to fuck somebody's brain up completely. We just do it. We, we just fuck your brain up chemically now, not physically. So the procedure involves drilling six holes into the top front of this woman's head. So right above your hairline comes straight down in into your skull and right into your uh, your frontal lobe. Yeah. That's it. Just bust out the fucking, you know, the old Milwaukee 18 volt, grab a handful of dirty drill bits and start popping holes in somebody's skull. And, you know, it, it, almost like you're just fucking drilling holes in a drywall trying to find a stud, except it's a human skull in, into their brain instead of, you know, drywall and two by four so it's the same thing though pretty much um the good news is she came out of surgery quote transformed and lived for wait for it five more years afterwards kind of wonder how long she would have lived if she didn't have a whole bunch of like extra holes in her head maybe 10 15 who knows but you know fuck it he did a bunch of lobotomies with his buddy james watts and his private uh, practice in DC. Uh, and after a while, he developed a new streamlined procedure, which was much more humane than drilling holes into the patient's head. And the new procedure worked like this. First of all, they would quote, render the patient unconscious with electroshock th uh, therapy techniques. Uh -huh. So they're going to fry your goddamn brain until you fall asleep. Yep. That's pretty cool already. Uh, he would then insert an ice pick just above the eyeball so where your skull and your eyeball meet if you put your finger right there now put that on about a 45 degree angle so it's not actually hitting your eyeball and it's coming in underneath your skull right above your eye and just push it through your eyelid or they would even sometimes pull your eyelid back so you can watch the whole fucking thing and they put that thing against your eyeball and they'd slide it up until it was touching your skull and then very very carefully with great care, 
he would take a hammer and just fucking smash an ice pick into this person's head. And once he got it in there, they just kind of twist it around. And if they didn't like the result on one side, they would actually do both. So <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have a, you're going to have a bad day because they're just going to jam a fucking metal rod almost through your eyeball into your brain and just swirl shit around on both sides of your head. So again, much more humane than just fucking drilling holes in their head, I guess. Unfortunately for the patient, this didn't really have a lot of positive results for, you know, anxiety or insomnia or any other kind of mental illness they're trying this with. Um, it most of the time just left them as a, a vegetable. Sometimes. A, a lot of the time. Uh, Sometimes people did survive. I mean, they... I, I personally know someone who has had a lobotomy, and all she can say now is her own name. And it's kind of sad, because she's like... Pro- she probably would have been a super sweet person if I could have known her beforehand. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, so after he destroyed a bunch of people's brains in D.C., he decides to take his little show on the road with what would become known as the Lobotomobile, which is fucking awful. No, 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 Lobotomo man. Yeah. So I, I, I was kind of hoping this was going to be like the bat, like the Batmobile, but shaped like an ice pick, and it's actually just like a shitty old camper van. Yeah. They turned into a mobile office. Um. And he would actually visit asylums across the country, uh, everywhere from Danvers, Massachusetts, all the way out into California. And yes, he did stop for a couple of months in West and West Virginia, where he did an unknown amount of lobotomies himself. But he also trained other people there how to do them. So I'm not sure how many people were actually lobotomized there, but there's a very good chance that he was responsible for more than a handful of over over 200. Okay, it was like over. I think that I I saw was like he did like 230 something like that. Yeah, and like but like one one single day Uh he had like a fucking like a line. I was getting there of people lined up. Yeah, of women lined up. Just just fucking hey, bring him in. Fucking, yep, this one's done. Slide the ice pick out, wipe it off in your fucking apron, bring the next one in. Yep. Done. You know, it, it, this guy's fucking Slap speed. Slap a sticker on them, they're fucking good to go. This guy is speed running, destroying human brains, and he's yeah. really good at it. He is responsible for somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,000 lobotomies personally. Yeah. Through, over his career. Um, I, I, I couldn't, again, the, this guy... <sighs> I think his heart was in the right place, but he was doing things in a very, very questionable manner. I mean, I, I, I know you can't really judge history because shit was different back then. Yeah. I but mean, when you look back at it and you go, wow, that was fucking brutal. Yeah. But and at the same time. Absolutely it, brutal. Like, it's, 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 if it wasn't, you know, I hate to be that guy, but when with all these places, if it wasn't for people like him, mm-hmm. we wouldn't be to where we are with science. Yep. If it wasn't for people that were grave robbing back in the 1800s, you know, in in Europe or in, before that, we wouldn't be to where we are now. I'm going to get a little controversial here for a second. Okay. If it wasn't for Yosef Mengele and the Japanese guys in Unit 731, we wouldn't be where we're at medically right now either. Uh, Yosef didn't, I mean, he, they did a lot of things with high pressure and low temperatures. That's why we know how to fight hypothermia. And it's also how we figured out what actually causes fucking the bends when you come up from a, a, a depth yeah. too quickly. It's because of these sick fucks like this that were more than willing to experiment on people that they thought were completely expendable. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's a reason that we rounded up as many Nazi scientists as we could after World War II, and we're like, hey, we're going to pretend that your name is John. You speak good English? No? Okay, cool. That's fine. Just don't talk. 
we got some papers for you to sign and we're going to bring you here. Yep. And then we're going to go over to Japan and be like, hey, I know we just fucking killed like six billion people over here. And you probably should have been some of them. But get in the fucking plane. We got to go. But I mean, for all fairness, some of those guys that came over from, not, from Nazi Germany were um, scientists as far as like medical engineering wise. Yep. You know, they weren't. Uh, but a lot of them were like fucking shit monsters that were also experimenting on people that we brought here to do other things and they led to a lot of medical advancement so yes they're monsters but they were our monsters for a little bit but remember who started some of that shit we did we did but we also didn't separate people out based on their religion and go i wonder if jews feel pain the same way as everybody else we were going to right but we didn't because we learned of that this guy named you know uncle adolf there he started doing it and they were like "Ooh, yeah he started doing it publicly we can't do that uh let's not so yeah um, because, you know, we were going to start this, you know, cause we started the eugenics movement and he but just we ran didn't, with it. We didn't do it the same way he did. We possibly were going to. You really think they would have just started rounding up Jews in the United States and putting them in camps to experiment on them because I, they are I didn't say, mud people. I didn't say that we were going to randomly, we were going to round them up. We were going to work with the people that were in the asylums that were there that were, um, you know, nobody knew about, nobody give a shit about, you know. Oh, so kind of like what we did after World War II, where we just fucking brought them here instead and paid them to do it. I mean, but we were going to do that. Any, we were probably going to do that anyway. Well, either way. Disgusting, awful people can sometimes do decent things. They just do them in exactly. very incorrect ways is the point we're getting at there. Well, I, I mean, incorrect is, uh, I guess, you know, eye of the beholder type of thing. I mean, you know. Oh, dude, I, oh, I keep, we got to do 731 soon then, because yeah. if, if you want to get into eye of the beholder in, in, like, immoral ways to do shit. Well, I mean, you've, you have to do something immoral to find, uh, to find a solution, you know. Like I said, you know, digging up graves and, you know. Doing all that shit to people. I'm more okay with grave robbing. But, I mean, you know. Honestly. Us doing lobotomies, off, you know. Because grave robbing, you're doing shit to a dead body. Mm-hmm. You're not killing somebody to do it. Yeah. You know, like I said, you know, the whole eugenics movement was a blight on eugenics. The, you know, all this other stuff was is, is a blight on our on our civilization. But. Our species. But it all. As a whole. Yes, but also at the same time, it furthered us. You know, I mean, could we have got there without it? Probably. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. I mean, it may have taken longer, but... You know, I would have been okay with that. A lot more people would have been alive. You know, but we just kind of... Being humans, we tend to... Uh, want to rush things along and you know we're curious little monkeys we're we're i think it was bill hicks we're a virus and sneakers we definitely are <laughs> we're a fucked up species we're, we're the only ones that are like hey i wonder what the inside of this same thing that i am looks like i'm gonna cut them open while they're still alive and look at it yeah yeah yep yeah i wonder what happens if i freeze this person's hands like up to the elbows I pour him in, like pour water over him, and then I bring him outside and let him freeze. Then come back in, heat him up real quick, and just pull down and see if I can pull their skin off. Yeah. Hey, what happens? Yeah, if, that's you know, pretty great, huh? What happens with twins? You know, if we do something to this twin, does this t- twin feel it? <sighs> yeah. We're fucking gross. I think is the the main point of this episode is uh yeah. is people people Definitely. are disgusting. <laughs> Definitely. Uh. So. Speaking of which, this this place, as you could guess, is most likely very 
best term I'm looking for. Supposedly absolutely haunted to the gills. Just due to how horribly people were treated. Um, the overcrowding. The violence between inmates. The violence between inmates and staff. Yep. And just the general... Uh, the general everything of this place is like a fucking breeding ground for ghosts. Yeah. No, no. And the fact that two, over 2,000 people died in this facility yeah, helps. Now, where he did all of his his lobotomies wasn't in the main building. He, what he did them was in actually a building out back. <laughs> okay. Which, I gotta say this, you know, I was very, I was kind of disappointed. Um, Try to do this research. Trying to find how many buildings, you know. There's 13. Yeah, there's 13, but you don't get to know what's in each and every single right. one of them, what every single one of them did. I had to actually watch several damn uh, ghost uh, hunting. Ghost move, shows. Ghost hunting shows, you know, to find out. Don't act disappointed about that. You would have watched them anyway. I mean, the only the one I did find that was actually really cool, cool was with uh, um, Jack um, Jack Osborne. Jack Osborne. You're welcome. <laughs> that actually was that I kind of, you know, kind of made uh, Jack kind of. Dude, he's br- way into that shit too. It brought uh, it. It touched him. Yeah. What happened in this that episode? That show is called Portals to Hell. It was season one, episode six, and if you have Discovery Plus, you can watch it there. Um. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I, I think wa- it's on Hulu as well. Just okay, regular Hulu. I say I, w- I watched up to the point where they brought a psychic in, and this woman described to a fucking T exactly what I'm about to talk about. Oh, you should. You and should he's have, like, uh... "Oh shit! Holy shit! I can't believe!" And the fact that this woman was blindfolded from the time they picked her up at the airport in a different fucking state, so she had no idea where she was going, yeah, is you incredible. Should have. Uh, you should have actually continued on to watch the rest of it. Um, because after what happened, but you know, anyway, go on what you're saying. Okay. What you're, what you're, we're going to talk about. So there, there's been a lot of, of deaths there. Um, there's a woman named Jane Harvey who committed suicide in, uh, I believe it was ward T. Um, yep. she had been abused most of her life by just people she knew, um, physically, sexually, emotionally. She was, Kind of a train wreck. Yeah. Not of her own making. And she was she was allegedly assaulted by a couple of inmates and that I'm sorry, inmates. Um yeah. pay, well, basic uh, whatever. Some of them were same same, same thing basically. Well no, and, some, no, some of them legitimately yeah, were because they were criminally insane. They're like, yeah. fuck it, we'll just throw them in with the regular crazy people. Some of them were uh, mentally disabled you know, mentally disabled. Some were, you know criminally insane. Some were actually elderly. Mm-hmm. That, li- that were there. So she was allegedly assaulted by a couple of inmates more than once and a couple of staff members. Um, and she got to the point where she had just had it and she tied a bed sheet to the backside of the metal frame of her bed, tied it around her neck, kneeled next to her bed, put her feet on the top of the bed frame and just leaned forward and pushed with her legs until she actually yep. s- strangled herself. Um, the more infamous and honestly sad of the, of the ones that I could find very sad was a man named Dean Metheny, who was in his, I believe he was in his mid twenties, early thirties. He wasn't a very old guy, something like that, um, yeah. <clears throat> but he had the mental capacity basically of a child. A lot of the staff members that, that dealt with him said that, you know, he would, a lot of the time when they had, you know, any time with him, he would sit at the table with him and he would talk and he would play with his like he'd play with like toy cars and stuff. And um, or he would just sit on the floor and draw and color and just he was basically a little kid in a grown man's body. Yeah. Uh, he, he his brain never developed fully to where it should have been. Um, and he was left alone with two other inmates that uh, were violent violent men that were in there for a reason. Um, <clears throat> the only reason why he was there in that room, same room, was because he 
was tended to have fits or right. outbreaks of you know of of rage, but not like these guys. But not like not like these. His were mostly, I think, were mostly because well, he was like a little kid. Mm-hmm. Little, temper tantrums. Well, temper. Yeah, little kids have yep. temper 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 tantrums. God temper tantrum. Can't get that word out. Um, so he was left alone with these two guys, and they ended up tying a bed sheet around his neck, throwing one end of it up over some pipes, and they would pull him up off the ground until he almost passed out, put him back down, pull him back up, put him back down. And then after doing this a couple of times, they realized that they were going to get in trouble because they hurt this guy. So one of them held him down while the other one picked up the leg of the, the metal leg of the metal bed frame, put it on the side of his head, and jumped on the bed until it actually crushed his skull. Um, yeah. So, one of the things... Oh, and by the way, this was in like 1980 that this happened. 1987, actually, is when this happened. So, not that long ago. No. I was born in 1987, so it was 33 years ago. In the grand scheme of things, fucking blink of an eye. Yeah, and actually one of the guys that did it died... In, like, 2014. Yeah, something like that, not too long ago. But the weird thing is, is the people that own this place have started saying that ever since that that man that was involved with that died, they've actually been seeing a large black mass moving through mostly that area, that wing, Uh where Dean was killed. They don't see it or feel it anywhere else. It's only in that, like, three to four room area. But they feel well. They had that psych medium, was she? Psychic medium, either way. But she fucking nailed it. Yeah, she said it was him. She said it wasn't wasn't the guy that died that was the murderer. She said it was actually um, Dean going back and forth. Right. She said it was him, and um, if you know. So no, the black mask she she felt was the man that killed him. No, she said that it was it was it was Dean going back and forth. She said you know because they actually went on to ask Dean after the fact that she was allowed to leave. They put a uh, REM pod down with a ball and some other stuff because they brought in and in, brought it in for him. They sat down on the table on the floor. Jack did Jack and the other girl, and they actually asked him. Dean, are you here with us? If you are, you can watch. You can make this light up. Make it light up. And he make it he made it light up. And um Jack's like you know, start talking with him. And everything that Jack was saying, he would light up. He's like, Do you like Jack? And he's like and he lit it up. And um they said, Dean, are you going back and forth? And he lit it up. Like, you know, he started playing with it. And um, they um, they brought out the mask that one of the guys had actually made that killed him. Yeah, that was fucking crazy, and, crazy looking. And um, they put it down, and he stopped communicating. As soon as they took it away, he he came back. Are you scared? Are you okay? They're not going to hurt you. Is he here? You know, and. There was no response or anything, you know. It was, so they got the tent. It was just, it was just him, you know. And kind of um, asked him if he was like. I think, I think they had asked him if he was stuck there or whatever. And and you know, he, he they basically Jack and him kind of like got a bond from it. And Jack was just kind. Of, it seemed like Jack was, you know, genuinely moved. Oh, dude, he he's very very into that. It, it's not. I think a lot of people, when they first saw him doing stuff like this, they're like, oh, it's Ozzy's kid trying to make some money, you know, just doing goofy shit. And then you're like, he's actually genuinely interested in the paranormal. And it makes me, like, respect him more. That Because I at first, again, I was one of those people where I was like, this fucking kid's just trying to make money. And then you're like, oh, no, he actually is, like, into this shit. Well, and Ozzy is actually as well. Really? I never would have guessed that Ozzy Osbourne was into weird shit. No, he's act well. He's actually into the paranormal. Oh, stuff. yeah, and a bunch of other stuff too. But uh, like, but I mean, you know, some of the stuff he believes is you know a little hocus pocus. So doesn't 
you know, Jack's mother, you know, they, they're, you know, a little skeptical on a lot of the stuff and, but, you know, they ultimately believe in a lot of the things, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, just listening to, you know, Ozzy talk about, you know, some of the stuff he's like, oh yeah, you know, whatever, you know, it's, it's just your damn dog or something yeah. like that, you know, but I mean, it was just kind of cool how, you know, they like, they actually had left and, um, well, the girl that was with Jack, like basically said, you know, hollered something back in there because the, they left the, the pod in there and Dean had actually started playing with it. He actually started like, you could like tell he was running his hand through it, kept going back and forth because it was mm. such a cool thing. You could just, like see it. <laughs> Back in, back up, forward. Just playing fucking Simon, dude. Yeah, just being like a little kid, you know. Whoa, hey, look! <laughs> I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Yep. And, and he, it's like she had mentioned something, and then like a door had shot down the hallway. So something else was actually down somewhere else. But they had like a whole bunch of stuff just not stop you know working, and because they have, you know, they say that they have a lot of stuff that. uh if it's electronic, stops working. Yeah, you know that's, that's what, a pretty common thing with the parent with paranormal. Though, is like it sucks batteries dry. You know, it can fuck with electric, yeah. you know, electronic stuff. Because they also have what is it? Uh, uh, what floor was that? The T wing? No, not one of the wings. I think it was. I think it was that one that lady killed herself on. Or yeah, that was, was uh, Jane. Was, yeah, there's another wing that's pretty fucking freaky as well, I guess. A lot of stuff. And then, what was it? Another investigation group that uh, went there. They uh, one of the, they split off. And, like, they spend the last, like, four or five hours. Of, like, they'll kind of, like, sleep or whatever. And they had actually gone down to the basement, to the morgue. And actually were down there. And they said that the whole place kind of felt didn't feel like creepy it just felt sad real real like sad and you know just kind of depressing right yeah that makes sense i mean there's a lot of when you have that much yeah bad shit happen Uh uh-huh it 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 leaves a mark and what i'm surprised is i'm kind of surprised that with it being an asylum that we didn't, I didn't find anything. I want you, but I'm surprised that we didn't find anything with the with the dentistry, because you go to Penhurst, holy fuck, yeah. so much about how, you know, they would rip people's teeth out uh-huh. of their freaking heads with no anesthesia. Yeah, yeah, because they thought if they could take your fucking teeth out, like some of them. Certain teeth, it would affect your personality. Or just because it would stop it from biting. Yeah. They wouldn't bite. Either way, fuck, dude. I mean, they're, you know, they're doing something for a reason, you know, or whatever. Or just because they wanted to rip their goddamn teeth out of their head. Yeah. There's a lot of sick fucks that get into working in places like this. Yeah. Just because they can legally do the shit that they would be doing on the side for fun. Yeah, and get paid for it. And then there's a lot of people that work there that genuinely care, but they get fucked over by yeah the sick shits. Yeah, they they care for these people and get you know sad coming back to these places. Well, yeah, I mean, just because you know they they have so much fond feelings, you know, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this was a huge downer. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's kind of cool because yeah. I mean, now. The it was bought by a a dad and a, a daughter, and now it's party partially a museum. And they do tours and shit too. Yeah, they also they do tours. They do ghost hunting tours um, of the place. I mean, hell, they've had. If you can name it, they've had them as far as reality show ghost hunting groups. They've had them there. You know, and they've all had some kind of experience. Yep. I mean, hell, I know of off the top of my head, 
four groups. Ghost Burr's five, been there. Five, five groups that went there, at least. Ghost, ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventurers. Yep. Uh, Paranormal State, which is out of Pen, Pen, uh, Pennsylvania. Which uh, makes sense. It's fucking right there. Yeah. Uh, there was, well, Portals to Hell with Jack and them. And then... Uh, then there was uh, the Tennessee Wraith Chase Chasers. They went there. Those dudes, they come up with some weird shit, too. They're like, oh, we're going to build ghost traps. And I'm like, take it easy there, Mountain Monsters. <laughs> yeah. Take it easy. It's like, yeah. we get it. Like, Relax. Settle down. Settle down. Calm you your... can't set fucking bear traps for ghosts, dude. <laughs> Calm your snallygaster yeah. down. Calm your tits. You ain't going to catch it like that. <laughs> yep. You know, uh, what else? Uh there was, I don't know, a few other groups that were actually had gone there, you know, but they all caught things on camera or had experiences. Kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's what I've got for this one. Um, yeah, that's hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, these ones are always kind of a drag. They make me feel bad because I'm like, oh, gross. We done some really nasty shit to each other. For medicine, for didn't and nothing that really even made a fucking difference, you know. I mean, at this point in time, we weren't that far off away, that far away from giving people fucking mercury, you know. We hadn't come that far, and now all of a sudden we're like, hey, what if I just fucking hammer a hole in your head? Maybe that'll fix it. It didn't work in the Middle Ages, but maybe it will now. Very true, you know. And we stopped, you know, having places like this, huge asylums, because it was deemed not. Um, not conducive to society. You know who you can really thank for that, believe it or not? Fucking Geraldo Rivera. Because he went into one of these places and he's like, this place is a shithole. <clears throat> these kids are sleeping on the floor. They're like, they're painting on the walls with their own shit. The people that work here don't even acknowledge that they exist. They don't eat that often. This place is gross. Yeah. And he got it shut down and they started fucking hammering on these these facilities oh yeah like penhurst that's uh how it got shut down was by uh a local um news anchor going in and was you know had like a little uh secret camera or something they had on them and caught all this stuff like people you know that were i don't know however like t- kids that were like eight, nine, ten years uh-huh. old that were in a bed that had never walked in their life. Yep. You know, because they're overstaffed, understaffed. Understaffed and, and they don't care. Or some of them just and some of them just didn't care. I mean that's a very sad place. Yeah. All very of these sad. are. Very sad, but very fucking haunted. Mm-hmm. So But yeah, so we'll uh ugh. Anyway, yeah, Kevin, headphones, headphones, earbuds, Ugh. Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> go over on to go over to studio dot com. Check them out. You know, find what you want. Put it in your basket. Go to checkout. Put the coupon code or promo code of Dark Windows fifteen in to get fifteen percent off your entire purchase. Yeah, you or can you go can over to on. you can go over to darkwindowspod dot com, and you can find links to all of our shit there. <laughs> Uh, Go to our Age of Radio page. You can listen to every episode we've ever recorded. You can find your next favorite podcast over there as well. Um, It's got links to our social media for the show uh, at Facebook. We on on Facebook, not at on Facebook. We are Dark Windows Podcast. Go and join the page. Don't be a pussy. Um, Instagram, we're Dark Windows Pod. Uh, We post stuff there occasionally. Uh, Twitter's dead to me, (laughs) but we're Dark Windows Pod there. If you want to go and. Again, just fucking rifle through our eulogy and look at what we've the the fucking meager scraps of things we've posted on Twitter. I feel like Twitter's like an old person thing now, and I don't get it. I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm old. Maybe I'm too old for Twitter. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. bitch about politics enough to go on Twitter because every time I go on there, it's just it's fucking dummies arguing with dummies over dumb stuff, and I hate it. I just want to go on Facebook and look at pictures of people's dogs and shit. Yeah, you know. Instagram's cool too, cause like it's like, hey, look, it's dogs, it's food, it's somebody painting something, 
is some girl with awesome boobs. It's great. Instagram's the fucking best. Yep. Um, because you can't argue with people on Instagram. You can't. You need to fucking put pictures of arguments up there. Get the fuck yeah, out of here. Definitely. Yeah. Go yell at a wall, you pain in the ass. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Not sure about next week, but we'll be here to do another one. I'm pretty confident in that. And until- Yeah, possibly. <laughs> you never know. Until then, just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean that the dark can't see into you. Treat everybody how you want to be treated. Yeah. Don't scramble people's brains. It's gross. <laughs>